Hello. I'm Pat Allen, and I'm a recovering alcoholic. Uh, <clears throat> I've never used cocaine, and I hope that doesn't cause some of you to disqualify me as a whatever. But I am an expert in lousy relationships. And so because of that, I'm going to teach what I need to learn the most and which I have learned some things about. I'm sober, going to be 21 years. I have the standard. Uh, I was a real drunk. I was a blackout drunk. And um, I'm naturally, as a blackout drunk, a recovering sex addict. I'm sure there are some of you out there. I realized I had a wonderful time from the people that told me and from some of the symptoms I created. But I have not used cocaine because way back when, 20 some years ago, we really, it wasn't that poly drug at that time. We were kind of purist at those days. So I've been married uh, three times, which is a standard miserable affair for people in uh, the program. And I've ruined numbers of relationships. I have become a marriage family child therapist. <clears throat> I'm really an artist and a musician, which is what most of us really are. I became a therapist as a way to figure out what they were doing to my head. Part of my alcoholism included trying to kill my husband, which I think, you know, meat cleaver, the whole trip. Uh, killing myself, uh, it includes all the standard things that you need to qualify. Now. I want to show you or tell you how we're going to run this. This is a workshop. I'm going to do some talking for about an hour, and I want you then to take, I will stand up and wiggle for a minute, but there's pieces of paper have been put on your table. If you will, tear them in pieces and write questions that you want me to answer. This is, pick out of my brain that which uh, you want, because uh, that's what these speakers are for. And uh, I want to see what God has to say to you through me which is what it's all about. Now, how many people here uh, admit they have a relationship problem? Okay. <clears throat> I thought we'd qualify. Now, how come, the way, how come we're the way we are? <clears throat> I want to give you some pieces of information about what I know about the compulsive personality. We are classified as compulsive personalities. We will never be different we never were different, and we're not going to get different. We are never going to recover from compulsivity. Thank God. Now, I'll tell you why. Because compulsive personalities, you know, I like the work of Carl Jung. Carl Jung worked with Bill Wilson in the establishment of the 12 Steps. Roland H. went from the Akron group over to the Oxford movement and dealt with Carl Jung in Switzerland to see what this issue of spirituality was. Spirituality in my world is the same as love. Love of self, love of others, love of God, love of everything. Carl Jung had, a, had an idea. He said that every human being had to individuate and become themselves. And that individuation included that every man, you men have a male body, you're rampant with testosterone, you're raging and crawling, hopefully. <laughs> And we women have estrogen. Estrogen is a very feeling hormone. It makes us laugh and cry and smile. We women have it when we're young and you guys have it when you're old. About the time we go into a midlife crisis, we women are starting to go to the stock exchange and wanting to start running the world. You guys are now going to gourmet cooking and needlepoint. So all of us are both masculine and feminine. This is a major, major premise. <clears throat> Every man has his sensitive side. The sensitive side of a man is called the anima. You can read about this in the book, The Invisible Partners by John Sanford, about the projection. The inside of a woman is the animus. The animus is Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone is a strong part of a woman that hopefully takes care of her. There's three ways that that male side of a woman operates. It's either an anchor, a shovel, or a claw. If it's an anchor, it's a woman who can say no to things that don't feel good to her. How many women in the room have difficulty saying no? Right. The feminine side of a man...
There will be a sign-up list outside the room after the meeting. <laughs> the inside of a man is very sensitive. I wonder if you ladies know that a man inside is more feminine than will ever be. But the problem with the femininity, it's either me, 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 or it's a giver. When a man has evolved and individuated, he knows how to give, protect, and cherish others better than himself. When a man has not gotten to that point, he still wants to be gratified. Now, what's going on with the compulsive personality? How many people in this room had a painful childhood? All of us. A painful childhood, whether your folks were wacko or you didn't have them or they beat you or molested you or incested you or whatever they did to you. When you have a painful childhood under the age of 10, you grow old too quick. The masculine wo woman is a woman who had to learn how to take care of herself, whatever way, who learned that she could not trust the men particularly in her life, or especially her dad. That an alcoholic, an addict, a cocaine, whatever, that person becomes 50 years old before they're 10 years old. How many of you men, for example, realize way back when you were feeling feelings that the normal guys weren't feeling? that you were sensitive and empathetic and that you you felt pain you felt pleasure more than the other folks and how many of you women learn very quickly don't trust other people you gotta do it yourself or forget it premise number one of this workshop that we people who have become compulsives had to handle issues at an age when kids should not have to handle them and the way we eventually learned how to handle them is to block out half so we felt normal a normal boy does not get in touch with his real deep feelings until he's older until he's 40 50 years old a normal young man thinks and wants and does and he does his number to go after things but the addictive compulsive male feels and so when a man uses now watch this when a man uses he generally will use a mind-altering substance to knock out what he knows about what he feels how many guys in the room used in order to feel better okay now take look what women do when women use we knock out our feelings so we can do better we can do things that we may not have been able to do if we were not using how many women use in order to control their feelings so that they can run move through life do you understand so here's the major problem in our relationships in normal relationships there's one man giving protecting and cherishing and there's one woman receiving being available and respecting in our relationships there are four people <laughs> there are two men fighting for control and there are two women fighting to get their feelings taken care of yes or no all right now what we're going to do here today is I'm going to show you how to have a compulsive relationship first of all I need to know you remember there's nothing on the planet but energy do we all understand everything's energy quantum physics is the application of Einstein to relativity in every form every one of us do you realize when we sober up that we're two human beings in one body that we have a brain we had to be gifted you see you know what happens when you're a compulsive personality and you're a kid some kids go wacko on their own adrenaline it's called schizophrenia it's called all kinds of nutty we got smart enough to knock out half of us with a mind-altering substance now I don't know if you cocaine fiends ever see two different visions but I remember driving with one hand like this you ever remember that because my brain couldn't handle the two images now in a relationship where everybody is double instead of single you gotta track me we have to decide whether we're men or women because we are both we are thinking wanting creative human beings who have tremendous feelings we are the ultimate we're old people in young bodies 
We can do things when we're sober that normies couldn't think about doing. But the problem we most have is we have trouble finding people to relate to. It's lonely at the top of the evolution ladder. Now that we're sober, we're thinking and feeling. And that causes us to become natural narcissists. <laughs> now the problem with narcissism is it doesn't marry anybody. Because it wants to be a 10 and they can't find anybody who'll be a zero unless you go to Al-Anon or some... <laughs> now the people in the Al-Anon programs and the O-Anons and the C-Anons and the whatever, those people take pride in being zeros. And I'll tell you why. Because they like to live around the excitement of complex, addictive personalities. Yes or no? Yes. They ride our trail. They love tracking us through jails and nut houses. <laughs> we are the most exciting creatures on this planet. <laughs> and because we're double, we're not multiple personalities. We're just plain double people starting right off. Because we're so complex, we're fascinating. We're fascinating when we're using, and we are double fascinating when we're sober. Because when we're sober, we're usually walking around on the planet. We're not in jail, we're not strapped to beds, we're kind of out here. So, the first thing we got to realize is, everybody in the room is two people. I'm Patricia, and I'm Pat. Patricia is kind of a feminine woman who likes to feel good and play and have a good time. Pat Allen is a killer. <laughs> Pat Allen is a workaholic. Pat Allen is a sexaholic. Pat Allen is an alcoholic. Pat Allen is compulsive in everything she does. And that's the way I like it. But when I'm in a relationship, do I want to be Pat Allen or do I want to be Patricia? Well, you know the answer. I want to be both. <laughs> now, the only problem is the person I'm relating to has got to figure out who I'm in at the moment. <laughs> so this workshop is going to be, you're going to pick your sex. Now, how do you like them? I mean, your genitals are of no consequence anymore. How many women in the room like to give, protect, and cherish that cuddly, quee, sweet, you know, sensitive, loving man that you find in the program, aren't they, darling? How many women in the program like to be the masculine energy? You like to give, protect, and cherish. You need only one thing. Money. <laughs> Those cute guys never keep a job, do they? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. They are great lays. <laughs> How many women in the room want to be the feminine energy? You want to wait till they chase you. <laughs> I want you all to notice that there's a dearth of feminine energy here. <laughs> all right. For a woman to want to be feminine, she's got to stop giving, stop protecting, and stop cherishing people better than herself. All the women who want to be feminine, get your hands up. I promise, on my honor, never to give anything to an able-bodied human being. Over the age of 10, especially men, especially money and sex, unless I get what I want first. How many men in the room? want to carry the masculine energy you want to give you want to protect and you want to cherish your women and your kids 
How many men want to give? Keep your hands up. I promise on my honor to give to, protect, and cherish the women and kids in my life, even when they're illogical, irrational, and irritating. So help me God. How many people in the room want to be both? You are permanently single. How many men in the room want to be the feminine energy? You want to find a nice, giving, protecting, cherishing woman who knows your creative, sensuous, sexual value and is willing to work for it. All right. Keep your hands up. I promise on my honor to respect the woman who's chosen to take care of me. Even when I know I'm smarter and I could do it better if I wanted to. So help me God. All right. So our major premise here is that we are all complicated compulsive personalities. Don't forget the book The Invisible Partners by John Sanford. There's also He, She, and We by Robert Johnson. This particular philosophy of the yin-yang energy in the compulsive personality based on the fact that we had a difficulty in being intimate when we were young. Because the people that we were supposed to be intimate with usually were weird, dead, incesting, molesting, gone, or using. Right? It's normal for us. Now the problem with intimacy is that if you don't get it from people, you get it somewhere else. You've got to get strokes. Now, if you're a normal human being, you will go to the forest, you will go to the seashore, you will go walk on grass, sand, water, and mud. I defy you to go crazy on grass, sand, water, and mud. If you ever flip out, anybody ever flipped out? Take your boots off, take your shoes off, take your socks off, get those sandals off, get your stinking little feet stuck in something called terra firma and walk on it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because once you connect to the energy of the planet, the trees, the flowers, and the earth, you will have difficulty staying in your head. You will have difficulty floating away. The big book, Alcoholics Anonymous, talks about go out into the sunshine, get into nature. Now, if you don't, now, I don't know many of you, but most of us addicts, at least for myself, I did not like sunlight, mud, water, sand, and grass. I liked doors and shades and lights out, right? I wanted to be away from people because I didn't know how to relate to you. In fact, I didn't like you. I spent my first years in the program hating people in my trench coat and my arms folded. I was a hostile, bar drinking, beer drinking, slugging, drunk. That comes from Irish, but that's, that's where I was. I was a mean, mean drunk. Started lots of fights. If you don't get intimacy from people, which we didn't, and if you don't have the sanity to get animals or nature, then you will go to things as a way to balance yourself, to get intimate with yourself. When you and I used, we felt normal because we stopped the screaming between our brains and our feelings. Because we felt and we thought and we felt and we thought and we could not think our way out of our feelings and we couldn't feel our way out of our thinking. Yes or no? Now, what we have to do in sobriety is what I'm talking about. We have to decide in a relationship whether we're the masculine energy or the feminine. And if we choose not to decide, we are condemned to being with people that are zeros. Because to be a narcissist is to be a 10. I want my thoughts respected and my feelings cherished. Works perfectly for single people. It does not work with people who want to be intimate and connected in particularly sexually. Because that's the most physical, mental and emotional intimacy. We used to use, I used to use people 
for sex but I wasn't intimate with them I was just trying to make that feeling feel right feel good I was trying to balance myself so the first thing I want you to remember is pick your side of the fence Never mind what you're supposed to be. If you're comfortable and you're a woman and you like taking care of a man, take care of him. But make sure it feels right to you. It's not what you should do or what he cons you into. If you're right as a guy feeling and wanting a woman to take care of you because you want to do the great American novel or you want to go create something, then be honest about it. Don't fake each other out. The people that pretend that they're one thing when they're really not. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of biology, neurology. How many left-handed men are in the room? Left-handed men and all women have a larger bridge between the two lobes in your brain. Roger Sperry got a Nobel Science Award for this. The left lobe of your brain is the one that has all the words. I think, I want, I feel, talk, 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 talk. The right lobe has no language. It's pure experience. Between the left lobe and the right lobe is a bridge called the corpus callosum. Roger Sperry did an experiment with people that had their corpus callosums clipped. They used to clip them for schizophrenics to separate their thoughts and feelings. For people who have it clipped, he put up a screen, table, bowl of junk, and he said, okay, the right hand is connected to the left lobe. What happens if the hand goes behind the screen, feels the objects? What can the person say about the objects? When the right hand goes behind the screen and touches the objects, the person can say apple, popcorn, sandpaper, cotton. But when the left hand goes behind the screen and touches the objects, the person knows there are objects but cannot call them by any name. Now what's that got to do with anything, right? Where's she going with that one? Here's where I'm going. Ladies. Remember ladies, because we're compulsive, we're ladies and gentlemen, we're both masculine and feminine. Our brains and our feelings are highly evolved. A normal woman is feel with a little think until she gets menopausal. Then the progesterone makes her think straighter. A normal man, he's very testosterone based. His feelings won't come out until he gets older. But for us, we're already ambisexual. Ambisexuality is when we're both masculine and feelings, masculine and thinking and feelings. So with us, we can be both. But neurologically, here's the problem. Ladies, hear this. When you ask a right-handed man what he feels, you forget one problem. He has a smaller bridge between the two lobes in his head and because of it, he does not have the verbal ability to go from the left lobe to the right lobe and back again with the words fast enough. So you know what you say about him? You're withholding your feelings from me. Picture this. They've been sober a couple of years. She's now going to therapy. I'm going to tell you something. I may be a therapist. I may even be a PhD. But what I learned in the program is where I got what it's all about. You got it? You got to be careful with people in the shrink business. Those people think they are God. I know I'm just serving him. You got it? There's a big difference. Now. She and he are going to get healed. They're going to therapy, right? Program. Okay, so they go to therapy and she gets with a gestalt therapist. you got to get that man of yours to get in touch with his feelings because he's got to show them and do them. And so she goes home and naturally she says to him, How are you feeling? And he says, Fine. Right? <laughs> now we know what fine means. Effed up, insecure, neurotic, and eccentric, right? That's fine. So she says to him, what are you feeling? He says, fine. She says, you're withholding from me. Why don't you share? You never share. I want to know your feelings. Let it out. Come out. Let me see it. When you used, you could feel where are your feelings. He says, I'm getting real angry. You want that one? She says to him, but if you don't let me know your feelings, I'm going to leave you. All right, I'll go. Naturally, sponsor says, go, go, shut up the bitch, go. 
He goes to the therapist and the therapist says, you've got to share your feelings, get in touch, you've got to carry it home to your woman because you've got to know this feminine side has got to be out there. He goes home and he said, honey, I'm ready to talk. I'm afraid I'm going impotent. I'm in love with your sister and I really don't know if I want to stay married anymore. <laughs> what does she say to him? I don't want to know this. Don't talk to me about this. Well, all the ladies in the room, on behalf of all the right-handed men, please raise your right hand. I promise, on my honor, never to get into a left lobe logical debate with a male of any age. For if I do, I shall lose and end up screaming, I hate you. You're a lousy lay. The kid isn't yours. <laughs> Ladies, would you please not ask, especially a complex, addictive male, how he's feeling? Unless he's chosen to be the complementary feminine energy and you're the masculine in every relationship I've got to have one respectable partner who knows what they think who knows what they want and who cares about the other person's feelings and I need one person who's cherishable who's willing to share their feelings how many of you guys in the room have been with the stone maiden in the program no feelings come out of her mouth nothing comes out of her mouth what comes out is what she thinks and what she wants for you to do and them to do but never do the, how do you feel honey fine because masculine women are like masculine men they don't want to be vulnerable and share their feelings how many women in the room have difficulty sharing their feelings that's normal that's normal for our program hear this if a man wants to be a good man here's how he talks to his woman now if there are any gay people or lesbians in this room I want you to know that when I use the word male and female it's generic it has nothing to do with genitals maleness is an energy system that gives protects and cherishes Femaleness is receptivity, availability, and respecting of the partner. Each of us are both male and femaleness. That's why we're here. That's what the program is for. That's what the 12 steps are for. The 12 steps of the program are to handle your feelings and your thinking. Because we are not normal. We are super normal. Do you understand what that means? Once we sober up, we have all of the giftedness of the highly evolved human being. We are generally bright. That's how we figured out how to knock out one side over the other. That's how we figured out how not to go absolutely nutso. We went nutso in a way. We got our own street drugs to figure out a way to survive and to not feel and think what we think and feel and get all complicated. So we become super normal with multiple choices. We can all, they did the diary report years ago, said that all of us in the compulsive programs, we could all be heterosexual, we can all be homosexual, and a lot of us want to be both. And that's simply a choice of using both sides of the system. So if there are any lesbians and any gay people here, I want you to remember the work I'm talking about is for you too. I still need a respectable partner. I still need a cherishable partner. Now, how many people want to be the male energy in an intimate relationship? Where are you? Okay. You people, here's your first real lesson. You must never do two things. Because this is what narcissists do. Narcissists expect their partners to do one.
If you really loved me, you'd guess what I want. <laughs> and if I've got to ask for it, it's not worth having. <laughs> Have we all got that one? Okay. So for you men who want to be masculine, I don't care if you don't know what you want for dinner. When she asks you what you want for dinner, you will say something. <laughs> Ladies, I don't care what you feel. I know it can take up to eight weeks to figure out why you're angry. But when he says, what are you upset about? Say something. <laughs> See, the biggest problem with com complex compulsive people is that we want people to guess. We don't, we're afraid to come out and extend ourselves. So what we do is we don't ask for what we want. So the male energy, all the people who want to be masculine, get your hands up. I promise on my honor to take the time to care enough, to say what I think, to say what I want, and to ask my partner how they feel about it. You hear that? How many women in the room, or men who want to be feminine, how many people who want to be the feminine energy would kill for a person who said, Honey, you don't make sense yet. Could you talk a little longer? How many women in the room are sick to death of men saying, Look, you smart character, get to the bottom line. What you're saying doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Gentlemen, remember, all females and all left-handed men have a larger bridge between the two lobes in their brain. They put all of their thoughts and all of their feelings together at the same time, which causes them to not make sense. <laughs> Right-handed men think or feel. Do you ever notice, honeys? Women. He comes in, he's going, and uh, where is it at? You didn't do this, and you called the so-and-so, and you whatever, blah, 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 and you, I call it the IRS love. You can see it in their eyes, cold. There they are. They're all intellectual, insensitive. And then, bip. Can we go play now? He has just made a rapid move from the left lobe to the right lobe. Or here's another one, ladies. You have gone out. You have gone out with him. You have seen him across a crowded meeting. And there he is, Mr. Perfect, dressed well. His last woman did him great. There he is. You know he's a sensuous sexual person. As he comes up to you, you can see the kids. You can see the wedding. The whole trip is before your very eyes, right? And then he says to you, could you loan me a little money? Right? Ladies, when you're dealing with a right-handed man at every given moment, you can see if he's in his logical lobe or his romantic lobe. Oftentimes, when you go out with him, see, there's a problem. The right lobe, the vocal column, and the penal column are often connected in one straight line. <laughs> They've done a study that 60 plus percent of men beg for sex they know they have no right to, but the mouth is going. In fact, they're asking for sex, they don't even know what they're going to do when they get it. You see, the problem, the problem with being a compulsive male is if you're used to having sex on the drugs, you're going to have a whole different ball game when you get off the drugs. 
Because where you may have been having strictly sex, which is a pure right lobe experience, now that left lobe is talking, 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 talking. Do you see? So, ladies, I strongly recommend that before you let them in, we know what in means? Any form of in, that magic wand, wherever it can get in. Keep it out until you hear three things. His mouth, sober, says to you, I want you, see, I want you to be my woman monogamously and continuously for a long time. Now, we got a little riot down here. I'm going to tell you something else. Boston University, Northwestern, and Stanford have come up with a marvelous study. Do you know, ladies, when that magic wand gets in, it triggers a chemical in our brain called oxytocin. Do you know what oxytocin does? It's addicted to that magic wand. <laughs> How many men in the room realize that if you can get in, you got it wired? Do we have that? Now, ladies, I want to tell you something, that being a compulsive personality, an addictive personality, we're as good a man as they are. We want what we want, we think what we think, and the problem with that is, is that we can sometimes go with men who are so sensitive, so loving, so tender, that they die of a relationship with us. I'm going to tell you something, gentlemen. Because of the way you are and because of the faith you have in your brains, if you inadvertently as a sensitive man, and we, remember, all the men in this room are very sensitive and all the women in this room are very powerful. We are complex human beings. We are both male and female. We women are built to mush our thoughts and feelings together and we generally don't kill ourselves or go back out and use unless we're very, very masculine. A masculine energy based person puts their thoughts, their feelings, their body all on the line. And inevitably, if there's a masculine woman who's going after a sensitive man and she gets him addicted to her, that can be a killer relationship. People can die of that one. I also want you to know, ladies, that if you think that you can let him in and you can have some casual sex as sensitive, creative human beings, you are going to get bonded and addicted to a human being that you may not like. So for those of you ladies and those of you sensitive men, I'm speaking to the sensitive feeling centered people. And we all are, but some of us are more than others. To those of you that are generally the sensitive energy in a relationship, do not have sex until your partner gives you long-term commitments, monogamous agreements, and sees you regularly and doesn't jerk you around. Because if you don't get those verbalized agreements, you could get addicted to them. Now, for those of you that are masculine, that can have casual sex. Masculine people can have casual sex because they're not as in touch with their feelings as they are with their logic. They get their ashes hauled, but they don't get bonded and as addicted as, as the feminine does. For those people, I admonish you. If you want to have sex with a program member, would you please get an agreement? If it's a one-night stand, say so. I want a one-night stand. I do not want a relationship. I am not committable. Believe me. How many ladies in the room? He says, I don't want a relationship and you don't believe him. <laughs> would you please believe him? He means what he says. And men who are men, left, right-handed men, they mean what they say and they say what they mean and their feelings do not influence them 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So be very, very careful. All right. Now, where are we at here? Okay. In a relationship, if you're the masculine energy, take the time to say what you think and say what you want and be sure you check the other person's feelings. How do you feel about what I think and want? And when the person tells you how they feel, please do not apply the laws of logic to feelings. Feelings are experiential. You can accept them, you can reject them, but you cannot analyze them. Here's what he says. Um, I really want this or that and I think this. And she says, I'm not very comfortable with that. Well, tell me the reason. You don't answer reasons for feelings. Feelings are feelings, they erupt. Do not, do not, do not explain or defend your feelings. Do not explain or defend your feelings. Say, you have a right to ask, I don't feel good, I don't want to do it, and I'm not going to. And that's it. No argument. When you ladies or you sensitive men get into debates, logic will dictate they will wear you down and wear you down until you do something that's not good for you. Don't do that. Now for those of you that wish to be the feminine energy in the relationship, your job is to say what you feel and what you don't want. In every relationship, I've got to have an initiator who knows what they want, who knows what they think, who checks with the other person's feelings and listens to their right to say no without punishing them. You see? And I need the person who knows what they feel and knows what they don't want, who respects the other person's thoughts and wants. That's the absolute basic premise of the communication technique. Now what if you're the respectable leader in the relationship and you've got some bad feelings? How do you open up your feelings to your partner? Because I've just ordered you to be the thinker and the wanter, right? Here's what you do. Real simple. I have some bad feelings I want to share with you. Are you up for listening? Get permission for your second suit. You have a first suit. One more time. How many people in the room want to be the respected initiative leader in a romantic relationship? Where are my masculine people? Whether you're a feminine body or masculine. Your job is to say what you think and what you want even if you've got to guess. And your job is to ask the other person what they feel. But on the days you want to share your feelings that are negative, you've got to get permission. I have some bad feelings. Are you up for listening? That way, watch what happens. When you want to come out of the right lobe, you've got to signal them so they can move over into the left lobe. <laughs> Compliments attract. Similars repel. I think, I think. I want, I want. I feel bad, I feel bad is the end of your relationship. That's the end. The way it works is... The cherished person who has a brilliant... Say you're the woman in the relationship or the feminine energy. You generally follow. And you've got a brainy idea. I have a brainy idea. Do you want to hear it? Get them to agree. Because how many women and men in the room, you came up with a brainy idea and your partner went up in smoke. It was like, hey, you're trying to control me. You're bumping into me. I'm the one. If you want to be with me, you follow me. Right? <laughs> How many people in the room want to be the feminine energy? Where are you? Take your position. Then I want you people to remember that when you have a brainy idea, it's your responsibility to signal your partner. Okay? And that's the way it's got to be. So in an addictive relationship, how many people are there? Four. How many people get to talk at one time? Two. You've got to put one of your suits in second place or you will bomb each other by talking from four positions. Okay? Now, what I want you to do, I've taken this amount of time to lay the foundation. I want to take five minutes and you don't have to leave the room. You can stand up, do whatever you want. There's paper on your tables. Would you please bring up questions or ask me questions from the audience because I want to spend the rest of the workshop answering your questions, not just talking at you. Starting now.
questions? Are you willing to give me a chair so I can put these on so I can have my hands free? Thank you. I want to get through all the questions if I can. I want a chair. Any chair. Just to set them down. Thanks. There we go. Thanks. That way I'll just plop them. There you okay. Go. Thanks. Okay. Here we go. I've been asked about where I am. For those of you that have come in late, I'm Pat Allen and I'm a recovering alcoholic, okay? Good. Uh, this is a delicate statement I'm about to make because it's, it's weird. You know, I, I just, last weekend I went down to Phoenix and did an Alcoholics Anonymous um, convention. It's a little strange having relationship workshops, so I'm a little touchy about saying who I am. If you have a need or a want to call me, Okay, you may get a hold of me in the Orange County area at 714-723-0338. If you're ever in the area, I have a group that I meet with every Wednesday night at the Radisson Hotel. Cost is five bucks just to pay for the hotel, just for the room, and I answer questions. So every Wednesday night, yes. The phone number in Orange County is 714-723-0338. Signal my secretary by saying you are at the CA convention. Then I'll know you're not a, quote, client. You're from the program, okay? If you want to be, if you're in Orange County, come to the Radisson Hotel across from the airport on Wednesday night at 7. That's where I do this. If you're from L.A., the phone number in L.A. is 213-275-5147. In L.A., I do this at the Westwood Playhouse in Westwood. The Westwood Playhouse on Monday nights in Westwood. The Orange County Airport, John Wayne Airport, Radisson Hotel. Monday is 7, Wednesday is 7, okay? I do not wish to be commercial, but I'm going to say something that sounds commercial to me. I have a tiny little book that I've got which has got the communication in it, okay? If you have a want for it, you can see me afterwards. All right, now, crunch, crunch. Yes? LA number is 213-275-5147. It will also call down to Orange County. It's just a different toll number, whatever. Okay. My goal now is to get through these questions so that you might hopefully have what you personally want from Pat Allen. An old hooker in the program said to me once that I had to learn to farm or know the difference between F and U one night stands. An affair or relationship. Do you agree with logic here? And would you say this could work for the masculine personality? Having sex is often a masculine operation because the purpose of the sex is to get gratified. The purpose of making love, however, is not to be gratified. It is to be satisfied physically, mentally, and emotionally. When we sober up in the program, we have the ability to make love. Before we sober up, we do not, because half of us is not present. Generally speaking, females who are using, as I said before, are using to not feel what they know, which is they shouldn't be doing it, and they're doing it for some reason, usually for money, okay? When we mate with somebody, one person, the feminine, brings the sensual and the sexual in exchange practically for the status, which is the ring and the marriage and the whatever, the name, the title, and the financial stability. There are only two games on this planet, money and sex. The way you handle money and sex will determine your level of sobriety. And sex, to have sex, is a masculine operation, period. If you have a question from the audience, you may ask me by yelling it out, and I'll repeat it. You want to put it in? Go ahead. What if, what if in spite of your definition, I really don't know if I'm the feminine or the masculine? Hear me. You are both. 
The problem that we have in the program is we want to demonstrate both sides of our highly evolved personality and it's fine as long as we're willing to be single. Everybody who's sober in this room is both masculine and feminine. But you have to choose before you start a relationship, not in the middle. Somebody asked me in the middle, what if I change back and forth? If you change back and forth, you're going to confuse your partner, unless, of course, they're an Al-Anon. <laughs> or they're codependent, because they're glued to you, remember? And those people will enable you to be both. And you know what both is? Narcissism. And if you want to read a book about it, here's a book. Narcissism, Denial of the True Self by Alexander Lowen. Gorgeous book. There's five levels of narcissism. Level one. I am a single person. I am both masculine. I am both feminine. I can think. I can feel. I am everything. That's one. That's healthy. Second. Narcissistic personality. I am both masculine, I am both feminine, and you are a zero. <laughs> Third level of narcissism, the borderline. Have you ever been in that tango relationship? Two step forwards, two step back. As you go forward, they go back. How many got one of those? That's called a borderline personality. A borderline is superior one day, inferior the next. They're masculine, they're feminine, and they jump back and forth. The only problem is it's you that's going back and forth with them. So the third level of narcissism is borderline, switch back and forth. That's our biggest problem in sobriety. That when we sober up, we're so complex that we can't figure out whether we're going forward or backward. You know what the problem then is? Decide. The fourth level of narcissism is the sociopathic personality. That's the one that said, sure, honey, I'm going to give you longevity, continuity, and exclusivity. You've been to that bitch, haven't you, right? <laughs> you get laid and he leaves or she leaves. You know what? The second step is for all of us. Came to believe in a power greater than ourselves that could restore us to sanity. Honeys, I mean, I'm a certified nut. I wish I kept the little white card without the color on it that they give you when you go to the nut house for trying to kill people. Right? I'm certified nut. State of California has records to say that I'm a homicidal person. Okay? So we do have a problem. But our greatest problem in relationship is narcissism. 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 We call it self-will run riot. That's what it's called in the program, reinterpreting words. The, social per per the sociopathic personality is a man who's so out of touch with his feelings that he will use you for anything he wants, or the woman. When I say man, remember, it could be a girl's body or a boy's body. The social per personality is never sober. Now, that doesn't mean they go out and use again, because they very often turn to you to use. They use you. They use your brains, your money, your everything. So they just take one object and turn it into another object. Run. Do not walk from sociopers, sociopathic personalities. <laughs> right? Here's a rule of thumb. The only way you know you love yourself or anybody else is by the commitments you're willing to make and keep. Only definition of love I know. The only way you know you love yourself or anybody else is by the commitments you're willing to make and keep. First step of the program. I am powerless over I am powerless over my ambisexual nature. My life is unmanageable when I attempt to live it as a narcissist. Came to believe in a power greater than myself as administered to by that funny lady in that funny conference, you see, that could maybe resort, restore me to sanity. Turn my life and my will over. I'm asking you to buy what I'm saying so that you might have a relationship in sobriety which we have a right to have. The fifth level of narcissism is a sociopath, and they're still using and they're still doing, and they're still out there, okay? So, narcissism is fine for single people, but not for people in relatedness. Pick your side of the fence. Why don't you do this? If you're just dating, date three. I always tell people to date three. 
Pick one or two and masculine and pick one that's, do it different. Try both sides. See which way you like it. It doesn't get important until you have sex. As soon as you want to have a sexual relationship, take your position. If you're the one that's leading, tell the person, I want a relationship with you exclusively, long term and monogamously. Let's do it. Let's go for it. And all of their answers, then yes or no. Well, what did you think? I mean, shouldn't we get to know each other? I mean, why can't we just have a little casual sex to start out? Isn't that a way to... Honeys, how many people realize, once we're sober, we can't muck around with sex? We can't muck around with sex. It's the fastest way back out you ever saw. Intimacy problems, fastest. What do we say? My background. You know, they come in the program and they say, don't, don't get into a serious relationship for a year? Three months. Three months. I met the most gorgeous cowboy you have ever seen. I bought that man the best Harley Davidson motorcycle he will ever have. We got on that motorcycle and we drove 3,500 miles on this stinking country. We scared more little kids in more little towns than you can ever believe. But we were sober. We were dry. And within a year, he took every stick of my furniture and the Harley Davidson and went back to his mother. And in my second year of sobriety, I was bankrupt, sleeping on a floor. And I was a school teacher. So I want you to know that I've learned a great deal about how not to have a relationship. What if in spite of your definition, you really don't know if you're feminine or masculine? I play both roles with both types of men. But of course, as an addict, there never been good relationships. Honey bun, that's the problem. You never picked one side. You said, I'm going to have a little on this side. You know what that's called? For men, it's called the Madonna horse syndrome. You know what's called for women? The priest playboy. We have the same thing. I want a man for my body, and I want a man for my brain. The man for my body's got to be good in the bed, and the man for my brain's got to be good at the bank. So if I get the bed and the bank handled, I got everything dealt with. What if the woman does not feel comfortable with sex until much later in the relationship, but the man is always frustrated? Sounds normal to me. Ladies, would you please promise not to use the following phrases? I have... What if the woman does not feel comfortable with sex until much later in the relationship, but the man is always frustrated? Sounds normal to me. <laughs> Ladies, would you please promise not to use the following phrases? I have my period. You can't have your period that much. I have my period. And I don't know you well enough. From now on, starting today, this is what you say to a man. When he comes after you. Now, we do know when he's coming after, don't we? We are sober enough. Okay, when he's coming after, right? You get the glint in the eye. First thing you say is, thank you. How many women in the room want to be seen as a sex object besides me? I get enough respect. I'm very bright. Very bright. I do not want to be respected. I want to be laid. <laughs> so the first thing you say to him, thank you. However, now listen to this one. I know that if I have sex with you, that I will bond to you. For I am very attracted to you. And so I'm not wanting to have sex until you're willing to have a long-term, continuous, and monogamous relationship with me. You should have no trouble waiting. I want to be the feminine energy, but I always choose feminine men. Well, then you are not choosing the feminine. Ladies, do you people know how to get out there and flirt? You know what to do. Now, you package that body up as good as you can. You decorate it. You do whatever you got to do. Because the major sex organ of a man is his eyeballs. Do we know that? <laughs> now, they look to see what they want to screw, we hear what we want to let in. Hear. 
We can see a little gnome of a man in the program, white socks, polyester. But if he drives the right car, that man is gorgeous. <laughs> and you know why? Because we women have a tendency to respect men that can take care of us, do we not? If he can pay his bills and maybe a little help for us, it tends to turn us on, okay? However, some of us, we do like our... You know what happens? Listen to this, ladies. Now listen carefully. If you speak first when you meet, you're the man. The left lobe is masculine. The right lobe is feminine. The right lobe has no words in it. So when he sees you and he comes up and he speaks first, he's had to rev up all of his scared energy. How many guys are afraid of rejection and abandonment? Have you ever noticed how you always get the people you don't want? Have you ever noticed how you flirt with the people next to the people you want? Have you ever noticed how you don't flirt with the one you really want because you don't want the one you really want to reject and abandon you so you don't even want to start? Would we please, come on people, raise your hands. I promise on my honor to flirt with the one I really want not with the one next door to him now feminine energy is magnetic has anybody in this room ever heard of the egg chasing the sperm anybody The way you can tell the masculine energy is it speaks first. Left lobe to left lobe. So if you ladies speak first, are you signaling him that you're magnetic, you're sensual, you're sexual? Are you, are you indicating that? No. Because the first thing out of your mouth is respectable. Hi there. Uh, have I seen you in the program before? <laughs> it's your first time here. Immediately, you are now his mother's superior sponsor, future teacher, whatever. <laughs> Ladies, bimbos get the best ones. And you know why? Because they don't have anything to say. Could you please, ladies, not sound brilliant till later, later? Okay? How many guys in the room? If she'd kept her mouth shut, she'd have gotten everything she wanted. If she hadn't asked for it, ladies, all the ladies in the room who want to be magnetic feminine women, raise your right hands. I promise, on my honor, never to ask for more, better, different love, affection, time with him, or sex. For when I ask, it turns him off, and I get less. So help me God. Now how about that? Do you understand what I am saying to you? If you ladies or gentlemen want to be magnetic, you've got to not talk and wait till they talk first. Yes. Interject on the question, okay? If you get what? How do you know what? Honey, if they don't, this is what you say. Now watch this. I'm going to show you how to get out of one of these messes where there's nothing coming. If I, can't, if I don't let you say what you want, remember you've got to accept, ladies and gentlemen, it's either enough or it isn't. Now here's what you say. George, I want to talk to you about our relationship. Is it comfortable now or later? Now? I want you to know I've really enjoyed the six months we've been together, the sex three times. I really, I really did like going with your uh, bowling buddies for dates every other week. <clears throat> and I absolutely understand it's programmed first, but I never got to see you. And I know you're giving me everything you could, because why would you withhold it? Therefore, I want you to know I'll be moving right along now. <laughs> Whereupon he will say one of two things. You're right. You deserve someone better than me. How many women have heard that? Believe him. Believe him. You're right. Or he will say the following. Wait, I can give more. And he will. 
Darling people, if you're with somebody who's passive aggressive, and we all are, when you ask them for love, affection, time, and sex, that means they can't give it to you. Because if they give it to you, it's obedience. And by God, we don't obey nobody, do we? All right. So the way to get it is to not ask for it, to say thank you for what you do get, and to say goodbye when you haven't gotten enough. Have I answered your question? If you're married to the dude, you stay. I don't believe in divorce. There's only two times I believe in divorce. Violence is one, and you're getting sick living with them. If you're getting physically, mentally, and emotionally ill, you have to leave. But if you're married to him, he's enough. You've got to supplement. Go to class. Do something else. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. What about what? Honey, we got to say what we feel good about. It really pleases me. Da, 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 da. It makes me so happy when you take me out to the... It thrills me when you make love to me. You are such a good lover. How many guys in a room want positive reinforcement? We're... You know how we manipulate them? We tell them how great they are. What do you mean they all know? I got news for you. Go out and practice. You got a whole... You got tonight. You got tomorrow morning. Man, we can rock this place. Wait a minute. Way back. Yes. Scream it out. Honey, I got news for you. Then you're with a man who's a better woman than you are. Because a real man, listen to me. If a man really loves you, this is what he says. He says, you know what? I've given you everything I've got to give you. And if it's not enough, woman, bye. Got it? But when you put each other down... That's when, you, that's when you're using your... That's you're on a dry drunk. Remember, ladies, if you're the feminine, you don't ask for what you want. You say what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad and what you don't want. How come I always thought that female meant giving, mourning, protect? Because you were raised probably in a family, in a church, in an ethnic system. How many women in this room, before I started talking, thought giving was, fe- was feminine? Giving back is feminine. Giving back is feminine. Masculine is giving. Giving back is feminine. Do you understand? How many men in the room believed when their woman was good to them that then you'd be good back to her? Wrong. That's you, feminine. Giving, protecting, and cherishing is masculine. Receiving, being available to receive, and respecting the giver is feminine. How many guys who give in the room, all you want is a smile and some respect for what you're doing? Appreciation. Guys just want us to smile, ladies. They like giving. Okay? Okay. Here you go. How do you know which one you are, masculine or feminine? How much time do you allow yourself to find out? As much time as it takes to make a decision to get the person in front of your face. Okay, there he is. Do I want to approach him? Does he want to approach me? Do I want to approach her? Do I want her to approach me? How many men in the room, you know how to seduce a lady over across the room? Smile, little cute. I call you cupcakes. How many cupcake men are here? You know how to get women to give to you, protect you, and cherish you. And that's okay as long as you decide to do it. As long as you decide. Make the decision right now and go out and practice it. Is it possible for two feminine energy people to have a healthy relationship? Yes, as long as they're not building anything. You can't build anything with two feminines. You can have a party, you can go on trips, you can do a lot. But for God's sakes, you can't pay bills, you can't have babies, you can't get married. Because you say, well, how do you feel? Well, I feel, how do you feel? Uh, What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? You want to get married? I don't know. You want to get married? I don't know. Now, how many people saw Baby Boom? Remember Baby Boom in the beginning? Oh, it's sex. 30 seconds? Okay, boom. When two masculine energies get together, they fight for power. I'm going to lead this. I'm going to lead this. Let's fight it out. Okay? I need one feminine, one masculine in all relationships. All relationships. I don't care what relationship you are. Okay? So uh, that's what you have. Can, uh, can two feminine people... We already asked that. Yeah, you can have a relationship. I think that's what we did. Hey, people, you remember when we were out there using? Okay. When the guys were using, they were going feminine. When the girls were using, they're going masculine. Yeah.
How can a woman get in touch with her feminine? How can a... Oh, left-handed women... Look, it's... Le, watch. Left-handed men and all women have a larger bridge. By the way, the book on that is Joe Tannenbaum's book, Male and Female Realities. Joe Tannenbaum's book, Male and Female Realities. This is what you do. How many women in the room have jobs and are responsible? How many women... You know how to be masculine. When the bell rings at the end of work, leave your balls at the office. <laughs> now, if you're going to be the feminine energy, this is what you do. You waste 30 to 60 minutes sitting tasting, touching, smelling, shopping, jacuzziing, massaging, listening to music. You know, how many guys have had their woman? You know the woman, uh, you call her up, uh, yeah, what do you want? I'll be done in five. Yeah, right, it's okay, bye, boom. How many men have called the Gestapo agent that you call the girlfriend? Ladies, if you're the feminine, or gentlemen, if you're the feminine, you've got to get out of your head and into your body. Would you please walk, ride, baby, do something, massage, bubble bath. You've got to get out of your head or you're not worth talking to. You're too intellectual. You're too hard. I'll get to the bottom point, whatever, da, 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 da. It's too, too cold-blooded. Take 30 to 60 minutes and waste time. Will all the girls in the room please raise your right hands? I promise, on my honor, before I get with my man, I will waste... 30 to 60 minutes tasting, touching, smelling, seeing, and hearing with no project in mind. So help me God. Here you go. Oh, here's a good one. How do you confront the fear of commitment because of your past uncommittable, uncommittable life? You just decide. I'm going to tell you something, people. We have been terrified all our life. We have got to just take a position and then do it. You've got to walk your way through it. There is no other way. So if you've decided to have a relationship, have one. If you're the feminine, speak your feelings. Open up your guts. Ask them what they think. Ask them what they want. Tell them how you feel about it. If you're the masculine, tell them what you think. Tell them what you want and ask them how they feel about it. And I promise you, you will get intimate. And there is no way to feel good about it. There's two ways to handle a phobia. Abstain and desensitize. To abstain is... Mm, a relationship the first year is three months perfect. He's perfect, she's perfect, they're sober, he's, uh, she wears, he wears, all, everything's perfect. The second three months, she was a feminine, now she's a bull dyke pushing people around. He was the strong, stalwart leader. Now he's a wuss. The third three months, you're getting used to his wuss and you're getting used to the bull dyke and it's starting to work out. And the fourth three months, you're now ready for a commitment. Do not sign, everybody in the room, this is, I married somebody who went bankrupt in my second year. For everybody in the room, would you please raise your right hand? I promise, on my honor, never to sign a legal document with a human being I have not known at least one year. So help me God. <laughs> What about the person who, if you tell them you want a commitment before you sleep with them, they run away? Bye! <laughs> Nobody's got VD from an abstinent program. I'm the masculine one. What if I'm not sure what I want from the feminine? You just sit down and you take the time. God, do we ladies get sick of... He says to us, hey, you want to make love? Uh, where do you want to go? Uh, what do you want for your birthday? What, what, what do you want for... How many women? You want to be the feminine, and he wants to be... And he's whining at you. And then you know what happens? As soon as... Well, I want to go to here and do this and do that. And he says, what does he say to you? I don't want to go. I don't want to do that. I mean, you don't control me. 
Ladies, if you're the feminine, wait until they decide what they want and what they think. Don't fill in the gap. Don't let them off the hook. Well, I'll take the time. What is it you want? Do you want a commitment or don't you want a commitment? Do you want to get married or don't you want to get married? Until you decide, I'm not doing nothing and you ain't getting in. <laughs> Period. Here we go. How do you let go of a man you've been addicted to? There's that magic wand. Oxytocin. <laughs> do you know? Listen to this, ladies. Every time we taste him, touch him, smell him, see him, and hear him. Every time we call his stinking answering machine to hear his stinking voice. Every time we sit outside of his house to watch him stinking through that car and that stinking woman that he's with now. Every time we go near him, we are getting another fix. That oxytocin can take up to two years to get over. Two years. If you are addicted to a man, well, parts of him anyway. If you're addicted to that man, you don't taste him, touch him, smell him, see him, or hear him for two years. You don't go near him if you possibly can. Because I want you to know, it's a physical problem. You are literally addicted to the chemistry that you create when you're near that person. I'm not attracted to others. In and you know what duty dating is? It's that horrible date you go on to get over them. <sighs> you know, duty dating. You've got to duty date. Duty date, duty date. Uh, I'm, uh, 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 uh. Go through it. What would you do in a relationship where you can't live with that person, but you can't live without them? I would decide which side. If I can't live with them and I can't live without them, I would probably pick one side. Remember, you either abstain or you binge. Either get in, like the program says, our hats are off to you. If you're addicted to somebody, either abstain from them for two years or binge on them. Call them, go with them, get, get into it. If you live, you'll be done. If you are the female who is paying the rent and taking care of the male, how do you remain feminine side in your relationship? Honey bun, you ain't not the female. You is the male. And as long as he is a good lay and he's sweet to you, you keep that man. How does your horoscope affect your energy? I am left-handed, uh, more masculine energy. I love three masculine, whatever, whatever. Gemini, summon. Look. When you're born, just like uh, colts are best born in April. Do we know that, little horses? And the reason is because the energy, the light, the sun, the food, everything. Each of us is born at a different time of the year, and it is an energy change. So I, do, I believe everything. I think everything impacts us. As far as I'm concerned, do whatever feels comfortable. <laughs> Here we go. Can you have both? Is, is it wrong to have or want both masculine and feminine? Most people do that are not committable. They have one for their masculine and one for their feminine. Standard operational procedure. It's called not being committable. Being committable is picking one side and finding a compliment. If you're the feminine, find a masculine person. If you're the masculine, find a feminine person. That's what works. Compliments attract, similars repel, period. That's the way it is. But if you need one of each, all you got to remember is you're non-committable and you are permanently single and that's the way life is. Yes. Go. I got news for you. Most everybody is masculine at work. We're all masculine at work. Sexism is when people treat women like they're women. Do you see what I mean? At work, we all deserve respect. We all deserve our thoughts and wants respected. But as soon as the bell goes off, we have multiple choice. Multiple choice. And we addictive personalities, we often fulfill both sides of our nature. We have one person for our head and one person for our body. And we have very great difficulty in picking which one we want to build a life with. I'm going to say something to you that you're really... No one is worth committing to. Don't ever commit to a person. Commit to the relationship, the lifestyle, but not to the person. If you want to live in Afghanistan and you want to work with a 
you know, the leprosy kids, then you better find somebody that wants that same lifestyle. And if that person is kind, nice, and fits your personality, go with it. Don't try to find the right person, especially in the program. Everybody is two people anyway, and you can't pick them. Pick the lifestyle and then get the best partner you can, then take care of your half of the game, and if they bomb it, they bomb it. That's the best you can do. Just make a commitment that you'll do the best to keep your half of the game. So everybody's masculine at work, dear. It's after work that counts. That's what we're talking about. I believe my boyfriend still loves his ex. I don't believe him when he says he doesn't. It seems I feel, it's, it, it's something I feel. Discuss. People, wherever love has existed, it will always exist. It does not become hate. The end of a relationship is apathy and empathy. Apathy and empathy. You no longer are hateful, rageful, vengeful. You wish them well, and you feel at least agape love for them, which is, I wish you no harm. If you require that your mate hate or not have feelings for his ex or her ex, you are asking them to be mentally ill. All you can ask them to do, all you can ask them to do is not talk about it and not act on it. Do not talk and act about old loves because your new love is a human being. Adler said we're all, that's what happens. Okay. Let's get through. Let's see what we do. Being a man, wanting to be the masculine energy, what should be done if intense feelings continue for a prolonged period of time? Uh, a couple of months. You go to a meeting, you share it at a stag, you talk with your sponsor, and if all of those do not work, then you say to your woman, I have some feelings that have been welling up inside of me that may not be very pleasant. Are you up for listening? And if she says, God willing, she says, yeah, I can listen to it. As long as you don't ask me to solve it, I'll listen to it. I'll help you clarify your mind. Well, what do you think? What do you want to do about it? Remember, gentlemen, if you want to be respected, don't dump your garbage on us. Don't dump it on us. Because then we see you as a little boy and we're your mommy and we want to get in and fix you. If you have bad feelings, go get them fixed by the other guys or the sponsors or the other program members. Remember, we've got to make it with our own sex before we make it to the opposite sex. Can a masculine man be feeling oriented as well as left as I? I am left handed. You absolutely right. People, ladies, if you're going with a left handed man, if you're going with a left handed man, you are neurologically identical to each other. It is most important that you, woman, that you pick your side so that he can be the opposite. I feel this, what do you think? I feel that, what do you think? I feel this, what do you not want? What do you want? You see what I'm saying? Take your position because both of you will be bumping into each other if you're not careful. It is now 22, okay? What about the left-handed man? Mine won't express anything, and our only good times are in bed. A man will share his feelings as soon as he's safe with you. Dear ladies, here's a message from me to you. Men may not talk about how they feel, but they demonstrate it. They do things. If you give them credit for all the little things they do, you will see very quickly that they love you. Getting them to verbalize is a woman's game. This is the end of side one. Okay, watch this. How many women in the room? She has difficult, watch. She said she let him in too fast. He now loves her and he's committed to her. And what does she feel? Fear. How many women in the room, when he really loves you, not like the jerk that you had before that was using and abusing you, when he really loves you, you feel like you're being smothered. Blech. You want to know what that is, ladies? That is your fear of giving up your independent ways. When a woman relates to a man, she gives up her independence. When a man relates to a woman, he gives up his irresponsibility. When he's committed to your protection, love, when you're able to receive and give back, you are now committed like a woman. But most of us alcoholic, addictive, cocaine women don't want to receive because we feel we owe them and we don't like the dependency, right? That means we're uncommittable. You're allowed to change your mind. You know what you need? 
You know how you change your mind? Number one, do you want to be this man's woman? No, is that yes? Do you want to be this man's woman? All right, are you willing to follow him unless he's immoral or unethical? See, we don't get to nitpick him. How many women lost him because he said three, you said four, he said it was Tuesday, you said it was Monday, he said Aunt Harriet was there, you said she wasn't there, and you've got to fight for the principle, right? Listen to me. If you give yourself to a man, follow him, respect him, be there. Yes, please, and thank you. Only fight him over moral and ethical issues for the sake of the relationship. Shut up. Got it? Okay, the women in the room, get your hands up. I promise, on my honor, if I choose him, I will respect him, his thoughts, his opinions, his suggestions, as long as they're moral and ethical, I'll do it his way. So help me God. Wait a minute. What? The man who doesn't want to commit. I'm going to tell you something. Do you know the reason men don't want to commit? Because we ladies don't require it. I got news for you. If they had to say something before they got in, they'd say it. There are so many masculine women giving so many feminine men everything they want without an agreement. They don't have to commit. They don't have to commit. Anybody know the story of the ladies of Troy? The ladies of Troy, you know the war, the Trojan War? The ladies of Troy got tired of the war, and they said, fellas, if you don't cut out this stupid war, you can't get home, you can't get in, you can't get fed, you can't get nothing. How long did the war last? It didn't. Uncommittable men are uncommittable because they're with women that are uncommittable that we women carry the spiritual anchor, that we're the ones that say no. It is normal for a man to be polygamous, normal. There is no such thing as a man who really physically wants to be monogamous, right men? <laughs> men by their nature physically would like as many women as they can take care of, physically, mentally, and emotionally. That is the way God built them. We are built to become bonded monogamously. But if we are so head trippy that we let them in without a commitment, who's responsible for that one? All the ladies in the room, one more time. I promise on my honor never to give anything to able-bodied men, especially money and sex, unless I get my commitment to longevity, continuity, and sexual exclusivity first. Got it? How many of you men realize, how many of you men realize that you will marry the woman that you idealize? that you are hoping that the woman you want loves herself better than you. You are hoping that she has the guts to stand up and not give you what you're whining for because you know that for the woman you marry, she's got to be an ideal. She's got to be virtuous because if you got in easy, he'll get in easy. Yes or no? You got it? Are we getting it? All right. Now, does they like it that way? No. All right. Let's see what we can do. How do you get more info about all of this? Okay. How do you get more info? If you're in Orange County, L.A., come and see. I do it all the time. God willing, I have attracted into my life publicists, agents, and all kinds of people. If everything goes well, I'm going to have my own television show, my own stuff. I mean, and that's, you know, I consider, this is what really is interesting. You know, it's very funny because when I came into the program, I was really a sick cookie. I mean, seriously, mentally and emotionally ill. 
And I just puttered along and I've got my license and did all my stuff and I've been a therapist for 17 years now. And people have come and they said, gee, you should be on this and that. And I want you to know something. I practice my business by the 12 traditions and I practice my life by attraction, not promotion. And people have come into my space who, if God wills it, will take me to a world-class level. And I'm really honored by that particular thing. But the most important thing, for me anyway, is to be invited to come down here and to do things like this for my fellow compulsive personalities. And I want you to know, it is such a joy for me to be able to do this. Oh, I'm not going to get... What happens with the people that get are ambidextrous. <laughs> ambidextrous. Listen to this. An ambidextrous man is considered left-handed. He can think and feel. An ambidextrous woman is more feminine. She can think and feel more than her sisters. But for women and left-handed men, they're the same. Right-handed men think or feel. That's the way it is, ladies. What? What? Right-handed right men think or feel. That's the reason. Ladies, watch this. You're with the right... A left-handed man thinks and feels. Women can... Or, or. Listen to me, ladies. When a man is approaching you sexually, he's approaching you intellectually, knowing before he even touches you whether he's committable or not. Men know before they come near you. If they can get into your body based on feeling good and you didn't require them to, to be responsible, like longevity, continuity, and exclusivity, you have given them the, the feminine, sensuous part of the relationship, but you never ask them to talk. And remember, right-handed men can separate their thoughts from their feelings. They have a wonderful time playing with you, but that doesn't mean they're committed. And they don't commit from their right-handed side. They commit from left-handed. I know I want a woman, I want to be committed to a woman, and I'm asking you to join me. That's how it starts and works. Is a year of sobriety uh, necessary for a good relationship? For a good relationship, you need to learn certain principles. The ones I've given you, if you're not sober a year, will give you an edge that you may not have had in the program. If you had not gotten this information, then a year of sobriety is almost necessary because of the fact that as both sides of your personality come up, the feminine and the masculine, is generally so overwhelming for a year that you really have to get used to it. The feelings come up in a woman and a man starts knowing that he's got to go out and make a living and be responsible. So if you've, not, if you've got this information, Take a risk and see what you can do with it. But follow what I'm saying. This, by the way, is on tape. Take it. Listen to it. Use it. Or test it and see how it doesn't work. What? What? Okay. You know what? Sex is never good. Making love is where it's at. Generally speaking, you know if sex is going to be good if you can dance with them, right? <laughs> Go dance with them. Is there such a thing as a healthy one-night stand sex thing? How do you know? Yes, listen to me. It is possible if you are truly sober, you're used to having feelings, you're used to being responsible, and you have decided to get your ashes hauled at the conference. The only thing that you must do is to make certain the partner you're with is sober a year and here's what the agreement is. But if you have sex with somebody less than a year sober and you do not verbalize what you're doing, you are doing something very dangerous for you and for their sobriety. Yes.
Is it is it possible for a man to can somebody repeat? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Remember, if a man, can, generally speaking, if your man goes back and forth, it's because his feelings swamp him. Ladies, if your man goes into his feminine when he's aiming towards the altar, stand very quietly. The problem with many women in the program is when a man vacillates between his thoughts and his feelings. But, well, that's it. You're out. You're done. It can take, it can take a man up to eight weeks to gel. It can take him. When he goes away, mark the calendar and watch what he does for eight weeks. If he's still gone at the end of eight weeks, he's gone. But during the eight weeks, don't start a new relationship. Don't get ba laid by somebody else because he could take up to eight weeks when he goes away to decide to come back. And when he comes back, the first thing he's going to ask you is, have you been to bed with somebody else? <laughs> so don't go. Don't go. Give him eight weeks. Yes. It, he may come back, but don't count on it. After eight weeks, what? I understand. He may come back. After, I'm only telling you. He did. That's what I mean. I heard he came back. That's a brand new relationship. Don't let him in without the contract. But if you, listen, if you were once, in, if you were once talking about getting married, the next time he comes back, the ring has got to be on the finger before you go to bed. Do you hear that? The ante goes up. Okay, here's what you got to do. Right foot over left. Can you do it? Did you hear what I said? Stop having sex until you get that ring because if you keep giving him back the old relationship, he'll never be forced to the next level. If he leaves you after he's committed to you, the next time he comes back, there has to be a higher ante. Ring. Let me see. I'm going to see. Okay. Oh, here we go. In my first five years of sobriety, I was totally in the masculine energy. I'm now 10 years sober, and I mostly have feminine energy. But when vulnerable, I instantly resort to my masculine side. How can you talk about that? I don't need to talk about that. If it's a woman, all you got to do is shut your mouth. You can do little or no damage with your mouth shut. I can love a man completely, but forever love a friendship, yet have no sexual attraction to him. Hey people, chemistry is not negotiable. I can't make it, you can't make it, it's either there or it isn't. And it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, we don't know why, but it's the way it is. So if there's no sexual chemistry, please. Marriage is not for friends. We live too long. Marriage is for lovers. The only reason we can stay married to somebody for the length of time that we might have a chance to is because the sex keeps us together. So don't marry your friend. I don't care how nice they are. It's not going to work unless you are absolutely... I don't know. It, it just does. Therefore, I would never establish married products. My romantic sexual attraction are to men who can't meet my emotional needs. When and how do I bring the two together? What action do I take? Well... This is a lady who apparently doesn't realize that when she goes after a man, he can't meet her emotional needs. What she's saying is, I want the all-encompassing man, the man who's, who's feminine and masculine. Your best bet is to realize, if you're going to be the feminine, you meet his emotional needs. If you're the masculine, he meets yours. But I'll bet you two to one that this is a woman who wants to be the woman who's attracted to men that are also the women. And so there's nobody giving at home. Okay? Somebody's got to give. How can I be the um, Al-Anon type and the compulsive type? I haven't brought the two together. You can't. I was fascinated by, fascinated by the one I want, and they aren't with me. Or they're fascinated with me, and I'm not with them. I truly can't be both. Isn't that being whole? Can't I switch back and forth? You sure can switch back and forth, but I suggest you have a real patient sponsor or a lot of therapy money because you're going to need it. Okay? <laughs> Here's, let's do a last one. Where is my little friend who's closing the meeting? 
Where is she? Okay. When the man is not the alcoholic and the woman is sober and he is a taker and me a giver, how do I handle this? Same way. If he's a good lay and you want to give, that's probably going to work. What she's saying is she's sober, which means she's a masculine woman coming into her logic, and he's a taker. He's not a taker. You're a giver. Men can't take. Nobody can take from you. You gave to him. What is the best way to regain trust and confidence in your relationship? First of all, I don't like the word trust. Faith. Have faith. Have faith in your ability to handle the crud that they bring you. Please do not trust human beings. We are not trustworthy. This business of trusting people, forget about trust. Have faith in yourself to handle what they do. Then you can march out. I've got to trust you to relate to you. No, you don't. Trustworthiness is what you look back on when you're way out there. Trust when you look forward is something you trust in God and nothing else. The only energy that we can trust is God's love for us and his acceptance of us and the process of the life on the planet here, our sobriety. Do not trust people. Have faith in yourself to handle them when they're not trustworthy. Then you can have a relationship. How can I learn better to communicate better with my partner? Buy the tape, buy the book, listen, and do. <laughs> How do you learn to love the one you're with? By knowing what you want and what you don't want and committing. How do you change from the masculine to the feminine? I'm the female. Shut your mouth, don't ask for what you want, find out what they want, find out what they think, see how you feel and say no to things you don't feel good about. That's bottom line. You want to come up? I'm going to keep, while you're walking up, you walk up and I'll keep answering them. How does a left-handed woman get more in touch with her feminine? Left-handed women are like all women, feeling-centered. Are the two ever compatible, masculine, masculine, feminine, and feminine? Masculine and masculine is what goes to work. Feminine and feminine is what goes to a party. But when you get married and have a relationship, I got somebody going to work and somebody creating a party because that's what it's all about. Okay? Thank you.